Justin Johnson has chosen the outside as the Hedgecock pole winner. That is his discretion. They will slow down through turns three and four through the KRC Power Steering start zone. The green flag is out and the 2021 Old North State Nationals are underway. Lap one to Justin Johnson. Johnson. Johnson, lap number one over Deke McCaskill. Here comes Mike Looney on the bottom. McCarty around the outside and already very racy throughout this field. As McCaskill to the bottom, trying to keep Justin Johnson held out side by side through the center of one and two. Wow, great move by the exit off of turn two for McCaskill. He'll clear Justin Johnson, new leader, Deke McCaskill. McCaskill going to lead lap number four. And if you're watching. Justin Johnson's running about a half lane lower than Deke McCaskill, which may be faster. Well, it is faster. There it is. Justin Johnson to the inside made it work. Has the preferred line. Clears Deke McCaskill. McCaskill will tuck back in behind him. Ooh, about touches the bumper through the center of the corner. Here goes Deke for the lead yet again off turn number two. Back and forth at the front of the field. And Hannah, I have never seen the groove early be this low in turns three and four. Traditionally, it's up by the outside wall. So something very different here at Orange County in the early going. Yeah, we talked about this in qualifying. They ran a lot lower than we were used to seeing again. Whoa, Deke McCaskill leans on Justin Johnson. Caution is out. We have a caution on lap 167 to go. And there it is, Connor Jones spun down here on the front stretch. Josh Berry passing through here. He heads to his pit area as well. You guys can see that from up there. Yeah, uh, Lenny, and that is a shocker. Barry was up near the top five. They have put the wrench in the window on the backside, and they are going to add fuel to the All Things Automotive and iRacing.com Chevrolet. So uh, perhaps a little bit of strategy here because you cannot take fuel and tires on the same pit stop. Yeah. Justin Johnson and Deke McCaskill, much like the start of the race, through the KRC Power Steering Restart Zone, are on the loud pedal, and we are off yet again to turn one. Definitely a much smoother restart for Deke McCaskill here compared to the first one, able to... Oh, hip check behind ooh, him, yeah. Maintain side by side with Justin. Takes him high into the corner, but Justin carries so much momentum. Coming off of four, almost Justin eight. Johnson high and now stopped outside of turn two. Came to a slow stop, has been able to refire. We'll have to see what happened there. Ooh, almost made some contact. I wonder if he too may have cut a tire. Interesting to see, but it's melee currently yeah. on pit road. All of a sudden, everyone said, well, if we're going to keep running caution laps, we're all going to come in. You've got Steve. Through the KRC Power Steering Restart Zone, Josh Berry and Connor Jones to the green flag, and we are off and racing yet again. What an awesome drone shot there. Josh Berry wasting no time whatsoever. Jumps to the front, clears Connor Jones, and lets the rest of the field have Connor Jones to be able to battle that out. Right Ooh, and there's our three-wide scenario. Can on the outside, Valento on the bottom. Fryer all the way to the bottom. We're making it work thus far. Fryer clears Valento. He holds that inside line and will try and make the pass here for the third position. Yeah, Deke trying to move his way forward through this field. Remember, he and a number of others got caught in this pit strategy thing that we're keeping an eye on. That's how Barry got the lead. Deke's got to be careful not to use the tires up. And for that matter, don't use Tyler Matthews up as they work their way down the back straightaway into turn number three. So move Deke up to position three. Matthews back to fourth. Here comes McCarty and Looney also, as well as the 24 of Diaz. Oh, and we've got big problems. Turn four. Jonathan Finley and Jessica can have gotten into it, it appears, and that will slow us here with about, oh, 62 laps complete. Now it sucks, but I mean, we got a handful of races coming up, and I think we'll be all right. Sam Butler disappointed, but he knows the future is ahead for him. Back to you. Thank you, Lenny. And yes, tough break is on the restart. Josh Berry jumps out ahead of Connor Jones. And look at this, Tyler Matthews on the outside. Hannah, he wants the runner-up spot. He's got the rear end hanging sideways off turn four. And Ty Tyler Matthews cut his teeth at Hickory Motor Speedway. He knows how to handle a loose race car, how to handle a handful of a race car. But that's not what they've given him here. He's just muscling his way to where he wants to be. And that's the second spot because who was in second? Connor Jones now in the third spot under fire from Mason Diaz. 
Looks like he's dropped a parachute out the back. Deke McCaskill now on the outside of Connor Jones, and he'll bring with him Lane Riggs. You have to wonder if something is wrong with the Connor Jones machine or if he simply just ran out of equipment. And Hannah, that last time in turn three, it looked like a couple of cars were showing smoke. People in that pit, they've got good equipment. Whoa! Mason Diaz into the quarter panel of Tyler Matthews, moves him up the racetrack. Hello. Matthews able to hold on to it. Diaz now, you have to wonder if Matthews is going to pay him back. And but he's not afraid to put up a fight. He's not afraid to give these guys the bumper, and it took him a year or two to get Ooh. here. Matthews just caught the fence. Ooh, yep, and Matthews now up on that high groove lane. Riggs doesn't miss a beat, takes advantage of it. Tries to. Try <laughs> these tires are starting to wear down. There's only about two guys, three guys in the field that have new tires. So we've got almost 100 laps on these right rears, and it's showing in the handling of these race cars. They're having a hard time keeping it underneath one another. They're having a hard time running that high lane Whoa! as they thought about it. Looney, though, <laughs> corrects it back on the front stretch. If I'm Lane Riggs right now, and I'm... Oh, whoa. problems. Turn number two. Joe Valento is eating the concrete for lunch. That is not what he wanted for his meal this afternoon. Neither did that race car, for that matter. And Josh Berry and Mason Diaz to the KRC Power Steering Restart Zone. And we are off and racing into turn number one. Ooh. Tyler Matthews didn't do well on that restart. It looks like he just spun the tires and able to recollect it and kind of get out of the way. McCarty, though, quickly to the bottom of him taking advantage of it. Mike Looney, though, all over the back bumper of Lane Riggs with Deke McCaskill side by side. But Deke McCaskill finally secures the pass on Lane Riggs. He will take over that fourth spot, or the third spot, I believe. That puts Lane Riggs back to fourth. Mike Looney taking advantage of the opportunity. He'll try and set Lane Riggs up for the fourth spot. And your leader there, Josh Berry, though, slowly starting to be reeled in by Mason Diaz. They maintained some position for a while, but Diaz is somewhat got on the gas a little bit harder and continues to reel in. Barry's car is starting to look a little bit more of a handful. Yeah, yeah. Diaz is there. He can smell blood in the water right now. You see Barry up the racetrack. He bobbled. Here comes Mason Diaz. Could Diaz unseat Josh Barry at the top of the scoring pylon? Off of turn number four, a dead heat at the strike. Barry has it. Now Diaz nearly spins in turn one. Diaz holds on to it, able to slide back in, but he knows he can do it now. He's going to take a second, cool himself off, and reset it. He's Deke now muscling his way around the 24. Diaz in pursuit of 30 grand. Ooh. Deke McCaskill leans on the door down the front stretch, side by side with Diaz for the second spot. Ooh, the outsider. I'm sorry, the rear end steps out. You can see it. See the white line on Diaz's steering wheel. He's turned right. Coming off the corner, chasing the right rear. He has clearly eaten up his right rear tire. McCaskill says, don't worry, I know how this works. I still have one. Sets his sights on the leader of Josh Berry. So McCaskill now goes to second with 62 laps to go. And McCaskill is there underneath of Josh Berry. You know, Dale Jr. for years said Deke McCaskill is the man. I don't know if he thinks the same thing right now because he's running his driver for 30 grand. Ooh, McCaskill leans into the left rear of Barry, which is a risky move. These two, two of the best caution, flies on the racetrack. 57 laps to go. And we should see everybody on pit road. The yes. pits are open this time by, and yes, here we come. Whoa, Brandon Pierce down there in the corner. That was almost bad. So Mason Diaz has come to the attention of the crew. Now I expect to see brand new sticker Hoosiers out on nearly every car on pit lane. And yes, it appears that they are. Looney is in, Barry is in, McCaskill. Almost the entire field, with the exception of Connor Jones, is heading down pit road. Later. Let's head. Once again, let's try this one more time. The Solid Rock Carrier's pace car makes its way to the safety of pit lane through the KRC Power Steering Restart Zone. And Race Control says that was good. The 14 fired first, but Josh Berry wins the race off turn number two, and here comes Deke McCaskill on the bottom. Much better restart for Connor Jones there, really holding his own under the realization that he doesn't have the same tires as everyone else. So hold on, just hold on to what you can, and he's doing a fine job of that right now. McCaskill. Now trailing down Josh Whoa, Barry. Oh, Lane Riggs. Whoa, Lane holds on to it sideways. You just 
Connor as the bumper barrier, but able to hold on to it. And yeah. up front, here comes Nate McCaskill underneath a Josh Berry. We can't keep enough. We, we <laughs> added cameras for this race and still don't have enough. Here comes Deke for the race lead. Lap number 148 on the board. It is side by side for $30,000. McCaskill proving he saved those left sides for a reason, able to hold it down on the bottom groove a little longer than Josh Berry. That's proving as he tries to carry the momentum off for unable to do so. Barry closes down, will take the spot. McCaskill not ready to give up that position. No, he's not. And McCaskill doing it the hard way. Remember, it's flatter on the bottom. Josh Berry knows that, trying to force Deke down there to use more of those tires up. Berry continues to hold on, but Deke, the wily veteran, once again turns left in the middle of turns one and two. Amazing race here for your lead. We've got a battle also for third and fourth. Diaz gets into lane. Riggs, they hold on to it. Your battle still for the front, though. You can see it here on the speed cam. We're double wide through a majority of the field. No one willing to give an inch, including these two for the lead. Well, I don't blame them. I wouldn't give an inch either, but you better figure it out quick because Mike Looney is coming, and he is coming hard, working hard in the HarrisonsWorkWear.com entry. These two are putting on a whale of a fight. Johnson, Mike Looney, though, has closed the gap. They're was three. Oh, contact. Ooh. Contact between McCaskill and Barry. Oh, and caution is out. Justin Johnson has spun it in turn four. Oh, and he's hit the fence too. Through the KRC power steering restart zone. Josh Barry, Deke McCaskill, a dead heat in the turn number one. Who emerges from this one? It may be possibly for 30 grand. Side by side again, look who else is back in the picture. There's Mason Diaz on the outside. Mason Diaz looks like he's got a phenomenal short run car. It really fires off well on these restarts. Ooh, was thinking about going low. Mike Looney said, I am here. As is Deke McCaskill through a blanket over the top seven right now. Whoa, contact with Looney and Diaz. Look at Lane Riggs shoving Tyler Matthews. Oh. Problems, turn number one. Actually, that's turn number three with the 91 of Jonathan Schaefer. He has shortened up the front end. The stands. But guess what? We're double filed up. Lights are off. We're going to try this again. 38 laps to go. The control car is Josh Berry. As the Solid Rock Carriers pace car escapes to the safety of pit lane. Ooh, they stacked up big time there on that one. And off to turn one they go. McCaskill on the bottom, Barry up top, McCaskill hooked the white line. He got through the center like a pair shot out a ball shot out of a cannon. And further back, Lane Riggs got that hood flapping. They are all over one another for the race lead. Yeah, Lane Riggs went from the high line to the low line, made it work. You Problems for Mason Diaz. He is uh, coming to the attention of the Mike Darn crew. Tough break for this youngster. He had a career run going. His Whoa, he may lose it here shortly. He's probably relying on a spotter a lot here. Mike Looney onto the inside door. Yeah, Looney is not going to be behind it when it flies off. Ooh. That's his goal. And it looks like race control is going to black flag the 99 uh. of Lane Riggs. Too much damage, too much of a hazard, and they're going to ride this out for all three laps they're allowed, I guarantee you. But there it is. The black flag is out. It's not the only thing flapping. That hood continues to wave, and it's backing everybody up because nobody wants to be there when that thing flies off. Absolutely. Mike Looney has a huge damp, bit of damage on the left rear. The left rear must have contacted Lane Riggs' car. Looney's got to be careful that that doesn't cause a tire rub. Back to you. Doesn't look like it's smoking or anything yet. So, of course, that team going to closely monitor. Well, he might be in the running for 500 bucks for the hard charger award from MPI. And look at who is this? Jared Fryer up to fourth now around Mike Looney. He started 15th, overhauled the car last night at the shop and brought it back to the racetrack. Boy, has that paid off for the defending series champion. Does Mike Looney have a problem, Hannah? He has dropped a couple of spots. Maybe that fender now has gotten into the tire on Mike Looney's car. Also someone we haven't talked about a lot, Steven Nassi up there in the top five. Now on the outside of Mike. Cue the Jaws music. Dun, 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 dun. Here comes Deke McCaskill because the pay window is about to open. Yes, it is. McCaskill's Ooh. there. If you had any doubt of Deke wanting $30,000, if you don't know the story, his wife Sandy has had some medical issues over. It's been well documented publicly. She's had a stroke. She's dealt with cancer. There's a lot of things that he, the girls, and his wife have dealt with. What would 30 grand mean to him? Whoa. Enough to turn Josh Berry. That's what it would mean. 
We've got the crowd here at Orange County Speedway on their feet. This is what you asked for. Five laps to go to the best in late model racing, battling it out. $30,000 on the line. Dale Jr. owns the lead car. The guy chasing it is his childhood late model hero. Will D. McCaskill spoil the victory for Josh Berry, looking to go two in a row after winning the Southern Edition of this race one year ago. If McCaskill has anything left in that tank, now is the time. Three laps to go. Tail, nose to tail, these two. McCaskill to the bottom. He'll try it once again as they come down the front stretch. Popsicle sticks in the air from Brandon Willard. Two laps to go. McCaskill is inside of turn two. McCaskill giving it everything he has, not quite enough down the back stretch. The laps are running out. He'll try and set him up down here at the front stretch. Little nudge through the front stretch. This could be what he needs. White flag. Can Deke McCaskill get underneath the two Josh Berry? He slipped in the center. Final two turns to Deke Sydney for 30 grand. Off the final turn, Josh Berry is going to hold off Deke McCaskill to win the Purrier Tank Lines Old Moore State Nationals by GXS Raps here at Orange County Speedway. Wow, what a race and what a drive by Josh Berry and Deke McCaskill. Here he comes out of the race car. Josh Berry, a two-time Old North State Nationals $30,000 winner. Gets congratulations from Danny Presnell. He'll get the Mandatory per North Carolina mask. Josh, you are exhausted. I've seen you in a lot of races. Have you ever had to drive a race car that hard in your life? I don't know, man. Um, that was everything I had. Um, early on, I really didn't feel like we were that great. Um, I'm still, man, I, that was so tough at the end. It was... Uh, the two tires saved us for sure. We got really loose getting in. Uh, the two tires tightened it up just enough where I could hang on till right at the end. But um, yeah, early on, I just I just didn't see passing those guys. So we kind of swung for the fence. We came early for fuel to kind of flip the strategy. Um, we're probably really close, but you know we're not in this for points or anything. We felt like it was worth the risk to get the track position. And uh, today we just had track position. And uh, I found a little bit at the top there, man, at the end. I, I was almost, I felt like I just had to keep moving up so Deke would really have to go up to run into me. And I mean, if that was anybody else, I'm not sure we'd be here. So hats off to him. Got a lot of respect for Deke. Raced him a long time. And man, like I said, that was just, uh, that was just unbelievable. I, I didn't see that one coming. You seem to have a, a thing now for big races where you come out and you make a statement. Have you gotten to the point in your career where this just ups the ante for you? You guys perform at a different level? Man, I don't know. Um, like I said, today we had to think outside the box. We had to change things up a little bit. Like I said, we, uh, you know, we had to go for the track position. I know how hard it is. And uh, I don't know, man. Like I said, we just uh, found something at the end there on the top. And, and uh, man, I just got to give hats off to all these guys for coming racing with me all, every week. And they've been here a long time. Um, all Things Automotive, Mark Thomas, I hope you're watching. Uh, I racing, Dale Jr., Kelly LW, like I said, everybody on this team. Um, David West, John West, amazing horsepower. It really opened it up there on the top when we were able to go. And, and uh, man, i just uh, very thankful right now. I didn't have a great day yesterday, but today might make up for it a little bit. Well, you very can well. see by the face, it's, it's almost emotionless to disappointing. disappointing. Tell us what it feels like. Yeah, it's, uh, it hurts pretty bad. <laughs> This is the best car I've ever had here. Uh, Marcus Richmond, RNS race cars, and John West racing engines. So uh, I've never had anything like this go around this racetrack. And I knew when Josh pitted for fuel that first time that that all he did was pass us. And um, he was the main one I was concerned about this whole weekend. And when he got in front of us, I knew it was gonna be really hard to pass. He uh, he gets around the outside here really good, and it was just gonna be hard to pass him. And I just. Uh, I can't rough them up without roughing myself up. I just don't drive like that. And I'll Count, countless short track racers would have. Yeah. They, they are just going for $1,000. Yeah. You had 30 and you stayed off them. How do you compose yourself that strongly? You're the guy that Dale Jr. looks up to and so many mm -hmm. others. What do you tell them at this moment why you didn't dump him? 
it just hurts, man. I, I don't know. I just, I just don't drive like that. I never have, and I've done it one time in my life, and it, uh, it didn't feel good. So uh, I didn't. Um, I just didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to pass them without wrecking them, and I wanted to. I wanted to pass them clean, and I know it's just gonna be really hard to do. But um, Josh is a heck of a wheel, man. He don't slip, and I knew it was gonna be really tough, but. Just felt like I let a lot of people down, and I just apologize. You didn't let anyone down. You were a class act and an honor to get to chat with you about this. Take it easy. You did great. Deke McCaskill comes home second.